Chaos Quantumania and oh my gosh, I loved it! Okay, we'll see if one of those looks good for a thumbnail. So yeah, I just saw Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania today. I know it's about a week and a half late, but I was sick the week it came out, and so I pushed it off a little bit. Finally got to see it, and I really enjoyed it. So today, here is my review of the film. For anyone who's new here with my reviews, I always have like three parts to them. I'm gonna start off with just a quick non-spoiler review, and then after that I react to my predictions. I posted a video on Sunday with my top 10 predictions for the movie. By the way, thank you to those of you who did not watch it. I said I secretly didn't want people to watch it because I didn't want people to comment and spoil the movie for me. Now that I've seen it, go give that video some love. I mean, it really did like the same, maybe a little bit worse than uh, my videos usually do, but I got zero comments, so that's what matters. But yeah, so I will react to those predictions, score myself, see how well I did, and then three, I will share the rest of my thoughts. I'll start sharing spoilery thoughts during the prediction reactions, but anything else that I'm thinking about after just seeing the movie, like I got out of the theater literally like an hour ago. But yeah, let's get into it. Non-spoiler review. So, this is just quick. I'm gonna say I really enjoyed the movie. It's probably my favorite MCU thing in a while. Um, I mean, since No Way Home, probably. And then before that, since Shang-Chi. Those are, those are kind of like the only things recently that I feel like are equal or above this movie, in my opinion. And also compared to like the shows too. At this point, like the only shows so far that have been comparable to like my favorite MCU movies at this point have been WandaVision and Loki and those were a while back, so. <laughs> By the way, I might have tricked you into clicking because I said in the thumbnail that it's the best MCU movie of this phase so far. Yes, I know we're in phase five technically, so it's the only movie in the phase so far. I thought about that because I was thinking about the fact that I feel, I feel like it is the best one in a while, but then I was like, wouldn't it be funny? So I might have tricked you. Sorry, not sorry. But why did I enjoy it? I feel like in general, it was just really like, classic Marvel and it did a good job at, you know, balancing the humor and the action and the cool visuals and everything and I didn't find myself getting bored dur during it which is something that has happened in a recent movie. Now I did mention Shang-Chi, I think it would be a little bit below that just because there's some things about the film that I feel like maybe it wasn't quite as smooth um, maybe like some transitions were a little bit off or something at different points, but it was really enjoyable and there were some really cool visual aspects and then the storyline was great, the villain was great, uh, I loved the characters in the film and so just in general, I just, I just really liked this one. So that's the end of my quick non-spoiler review. Now we are getting into the spoiler portion, so if you care about that, come back and watch the rest of the video after you see the movie. But let's get to reacting to my predictions. I'm so excited because, oh my gosh, when I filmed my predictions video on Sunday, I was like, I probably got everything wrong and it's so embarrassing because everyone's probably already seen this movie already and I'm just saying all these predictions that are wrong. I think I very well may have done the best in my predictions on this movie than on any movie before. I haven't really kept track of all of my scores, maybe I'll count that up after posting this video, but I, I did really good, I'm pretty sure, but let's go ahead and look at my predictions and score how well I did out of 10. So, my first prediction was does Scott die and I said no, it would be such a disrespect to his character and so I got that one right got one point so far. They did really scare me for a second though. At the end when everyone goes through the portal except for Scott and Kane comes back and there's that big fight and I'm like no this is the part in the trailer that made people think that maybe he's gonna die and then he didn't. Oh my gosh I was so happy when Hope came back. <sighs> Scared me for a second. And then my second prediction, oh my gosh. So, my second prediction was answering the question, will we finally get a connection to the Loki TV show? And oh my gosh, that end credit scene! Hoo -hoo. 
it just has me stoked for Loki season two. I'm so excited. Oh, this is a good place to talk about that post credit scene. Uh, seeing Loki and Mobius and another variant of Kang was just crazy. And it's crazy too, because it's the first credit scene that connects back to the TV shows. Because I know not necessarily everyone watches the TV shows. I don't know who wouldn't have watched Loki though. It was like the best one, in my opinion. But man, ah, uh, that was just mind blowing mind-blowing seeing that credit scene. Oh, Okay, enough, enough fangirling about Loki. I got that prediction right. Oh yeah, we're two for two now. My third prediction was, um, ask, answering the question, why does Kang ask specifically Scott for help? And I had two parts to this answer. So my first part was that he needed pin particles, which is correct. That was right, so I'm gonna give myself half a point for that. But my second part was saying like, why specifically Scott and not like Hank or Janet or Hope? And I said it was gonna have something to do with the fact that he used Pym Particles to time travel is gonna be part of the reason why Kang needed him to get back out of the quantum realm. And I didn't get that part right, so I'm just gonna give myself a half point for this prediction. In the end, really, it was just that Scott was the one who ended up being captured by Kang, and then also it was a heisty type of thing, so it played to his skill set. Okay, so we're at two and a half points out of three. My fourth prediction was about how well does Janet actually know Kang, and my prediction was that she worked with him when she was stuck in the quantum realm, and then he turned on her, and that's why she knew he was bad news. And man, I did not expect myself to get that one right, but I did! It didn't go down exactly like that, like, I mean, she worked with him, and then she saw into his mind and figured out that he, he was a bad dude. So not necessarily him turning on her. It kind of has still the same overarching idea. But I didn't even make that prediction that she actually worked with him when she was down in the quantum realm until I was filming my video on Sunday. So I'm surprised I got that one right. But at this point, dang, we are at three and a half out of four. Prediction number five was answering the question, would we see the multiverse and alternate timelines? And yes, we totally did. Not only did we see a bunch of variations of Kang in the mid credit scene, we also literally see a glimpse at the timelines and the sacred timeline, and Kang has a uh, multiversal travel ship, I guess it's the ship, and at one point Janet sees his memories from massacring entire timelines, and so yes, we totally saw a bunch of alternate timelines. And and that puts me at four and a half out of five. My prediction number six was answering the question, would there be a time jump while they are down in the quantum realm? And I said there wouldn't be, and it doesn't seem like there was. I feel like if there was a significant one, then it would have addressed it at the end of the film. And so I'm gonna give myself a point for that. It seems like there wasn't, for some reason, a time jump, because that wasn't really relevant to this plot. So it makes sense. So here I am, five and a half out of six. My seventh prediction was answering the question of why is Kang in the quantum realm? I predicted that he who remains was the one who exiled him and trapped him there. I guess I got this wrong. It was actually, it seems like, at least based on <laughs> that mid credit scene, it was different variations of Kang. Apparently all of the other variations of Kang, uh, aside from this king and he who remains are all form like the this council collaborative i don't know what to call it and they're the ones who exiled him down to the quantum realm so i unfortunately didn't get that one right but i feel like it was on the right track i've got to give myself some credit there prediction number eight was answering the t question to is this king the same king that is going to be the big bad coming up in the rest of phase five and phase six. And I said yes, and how we would know is that he wouldn't die at the end. Now this is a really hard one to score at this point in time, but I'm gonna say that it seems like I did get that right because the end of the film 
teases the fact that he didn't actually die. Multiple times. First, Scott doubting himself whether he actually did save the universe, and then second, by the mid-credits scene with all of the other variations of Kang being like, did he really die? So it seems like that Kang, especially as he's being singled out by all of the other variants of Kang being like, the Conqueror one. Uh, is that what they called him? I can't remember. But they're saying like, that one, the one we exiled, um, and referring to him that way, I feel like I was right. So I'm gonna give myself a point for this one, specifically to the fact that I said I'd give myself a point for this one if he didn't die and they teased him being the big bad in the future, and it seems like they're teasing that he didn't actually die and he will be the big bad in the future. So I'm gonna give myself a point for that one, which puts me at six and a half out of eight. Oh, I'm doing so good. Prediction number nine, I was answering the question to, does somebody die and if so, who? I said yes, it would be Hank, and I am not disappointed to say that I got this one wrong. <laughs> Um, because no one did, except for Darren, but that doesn't really count <laughs> as one of the heroes dying. I did mention in my predictions video that I felt like it would either be between Hank and Hope, and oh my goodness, when it got to the point where I was like, oh no, they're gonna kill off Scott, and then Hope comes in and saves him, and I'm like, yes! And then I'm like, oh no, they're gonna play a switcheroo, and she's gonna die instead, and he is saving him, but then that didn't happen, so then I was super happy that no one in the end actually died. So I, I'm happy to have gotten that prediction wrong, but that in the end puts me at, oh, I have one more prediction. So I'm still at six and a half out of nine. One more prediction. I asked the question, will Cassie take up Scott's mantle at the end of the film? And the way I said I'd measure this is if she gets her own suit with her own Ant-Man powers, even though if she doesn't have like her own superhero name yet, but just the fact that there will be potential for her to be brought in as kind of a replacement for Scott in the Young Avengers. And that totally happened. We honestly saw a lot of her using powers, uh, kind of more than I expected going into it. So that was really cool to see so much of Cassie being a superhero. And that means I ended up having seven and a half out of my 10 predictions right. 75%, three out of four. That's pretty good. I'm pleased with myself. My goal is always to get at least half of them right. I did quite a bit better than that. I think that very well may be the best I've done on one of my prediction videos. So I am not disappointed. I feel like this video is gonna be kind of long because I had so much to say about the predictions, but maybe I won't have as much to say about the review. Anyway, we are on to part three of my review video, the spoilery review, or also known as I just ramble on about anything that's going on in my head about the movie. I already said stuff about like, I really enjoyed it. I thought there were a lot of cool visual things in the quantum realm. There were some things that maybe didn't go as smoothly as maybe some other MCU films, but I did think that there was just some really cool looking stuff in this movie. Let's talk a bit about characters. That's the next thing um, that I'm thinking about. Cassie, I really liked her in this movie. I didn't really know what to expect going into it, and I just really like how they uh, interpreted her character now that she's like a what, 18 year old uh, <laughs> having grown up with a superhero for a dad and wanting to help out other people and then having that be a big part of what, uh, you know, ends up supporting like the rebellion down in the quantum realm. And she had some fun lines. She also has some cheesy ones, but you know, I laughed at them. They weren't terrible. And I feel like I just, at this point, I'm excited to see more of Cassie. Scott was great. He's always great. Felt really similar to his characterization in the other ones. It's interesting to see where he's at. You know, he is a little bit complacent where he's at. So it was fun to see Cassie challenging him a little bit. Hope. Super cool, loved her uh, new wasp suit. And I love to see where she's at, you know, helping the world. Janet, we got a lot of interesting backstory about Janet in this film. Uh, learning about her time down in the quantum realm because apparently there's other people there. So it was interesting to see um, her interactions with Kang and it teased like her being bad for a little bit, which was interesting, but it ended up not being the case. And Hank, I really liked Hank in this one too. Like, 
his his connection with the ants is always great and they still brought the ants to the quantum realm i honestly really liked that moment at, at the end where the ants just came in and saved the day king oh my gosh king was awesome it was so cool to see this iteration of him rather than he who remains i love the way he who remains is played in loki but i loved seeing this version of kang as well he was honestly such a great part of the film it's always great having a really good villain modok uh not my favorite the design is just weird so i i don't really know i anytime i saw him on screen i kind of like cringed a little bit especially when he took off his mask and he's just like freaking humpty dumpty you know i did like the end though when he died not because he died but oh <laughs> that sounded bad i liked the end where they played off his death a little bit comedically where he's like at least i got to die an avenger <laughs> That actually cra cracked me up. I feel like that might have been something that other people would have cringed at, but I liked that actually. Let's see, what else? Some of the new characters were interesting. It was cool seeing uh, the guy who plays Cheaty in The Good Place. I didn't know he was going to be in it. Uh, and Bill Murray's character. I didn't like him though that much. And I forgot the name of the, the girl that Cassie helps break out of the prison. There are a lot of cool side characters in this one too, I think. And just seeing, you know, all types of people down in the quantum realm, not what you would expect. What else do I have to say? What do I always bring up in uh, reviews? I've got the characters. I think I talked about all of those. Cinematography and like the visual aspect, I talked a bit about that. Plot and fight scenes. Yeah, I haven't talked about those. Uh, the plot itself was kind of classic. I wasn't really surprised about anything and I did know fairly well going into it what it was going to be about, but I feel like it went really well. A lot of it at first was about, you know, the two groups finding each other. I didn't realize that that would happen when they got sucked into the quantum realm. They'd be sucked into two different separate places and they'd start by trying to find each other and that carried the plot forward in like the first act. But then once like Scott got to Kang and was like, oh, I need you to do this for me. That's, that's really what I expected going into it. But yeah, I like the storyline. It was a good, good superhero, science fiction, spacey type, but actually in the quantum realm storyline was good. And then uh, I guess I also like talking about, you know, fight scenes, action sequences. That That's not necessarily what stood out to me on this, although there were a lot of good ones. A lot of the things that stand out to me in this one are like the uses of the power. So like giant Scott and uh, Cassie learning to fight from him for a little bit. I liked that that moment a little bit. Yeah, there was just really good uh, sequences show showcasing the powers of Ant-Man and the Wasp and Cassie, whatever she's called. Doesn't really have a name, I guess. But man, I'm also thinking about that time where Kang just comes out and like literally vaporizes everyone. Don't know why he didn't do that literally like five seconds later, but <laughs> that was <laughs> scary. But then the ants come in and save the day, right? But yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts. I probably rambled on way too long, so if you got to the end of this video, congratulations. Um, let me know down in the comments what you thought of Ant-Man. I guess I did want to talk a little bit more about the, uh, mid credit scene. I brought it up a couple of times, but I'm just really curious to see where they are going into Kang Dynasty. If Kang Dynasty is, like, fighting all the Kangs or just, like, the most powerful one. That's an interesting thing to think about. Let me know down in the comments what you think about that. But yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe, which you can do by clicking over there. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified next time I post another Marvel video or something like this. And of course, while you wait, check out some more videos. Up top, there's my video of my 10 predictions, so you can get a little bit more background if you want to know a little bit more why I made my predictions the way I did. And underneath that is a playlist of all of my movie reviews. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!